Everybody, welcome back to Off the Bench. Post week eight, or kind of, you know, still in week eight. Bengals, Browns are currently playing as we're recording. Browns are. Are the Bengals out. playing tonight? I, you know, that's debatable. The Browns are blowing them out. The Bengals lose Jamar Chase for five minutes and forget how to play football. So that's interesting. I'm Brandon Carney alongside Maddie Kroll once again. Maddie, how are you feeling tonight? I am beat because I just got home after a nightmare travel experience. Uh, there's a certain airline that I will not encourage people to fly anymore personally that I will not name because you never know who our sponsors could be. You are a much better person than I am because I would call that shit out. I am exhausted for you. I mean, you've had quite the experience. I do feel like it's time for you to just make the switch on airlines though. Yeah. I'm, I'm a big proponent of Delta. So shout out Delta if you would like to sponsor us. I fly your airline all the time. Phenomenal cookies. It's just a whole yeah. experience. But Del- you flew Delta today. Yeah, Delta is who ultimately got me home. They were not the airline I had issue with. Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you know exactly who I had mm-hmm. issue with. But, uh, you know, we're back. I really I, I can't complain too much. I, I have a podcast for a living. Life's, life's pretty good overall. Mm-hmm. So. This week in the NFL, we finally had some points being scored. Kind of the the storyline or one of the big overarching headlines of the season so far has been, where are the points at? We've got fantasy players wondering, you know, why are all the scores of everyone's matchups so low this year? This week, it felt like the scoring came out fast and furious right at 1 p.m. I looked up and the Lions were up 14-0 over the Dolphins before I could blink. So very nice to see some actual points being put on the board for once. And with that came a lot of players getting in the end zone a lot for individual performances. Maddie, who did you think had the most impressive individual performance of the week? Okay, so this is a little bit of a trick question. This is like showbiz stuff that I'm about to throw Mm -hmm. out because you got to the show sheet faster than I did. And you put in who I would have chosen. Yes. I'm not going to give it away too much, but the triple crown guy. Uh huh. Yeah. Everybody knows now. Hey, listen, a bunch of guys got in with three touchdowns. You could be talking about Deonta Foreman. I, I am not, but yeah. um, I'm going with Alvin Kamara this week. Okay. He was the Saints offense. He was, he was the offense during that game. There was no other offense being played other than him. Um, also, fun fact, like I lost a running back. And then I had one on by. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to pick him up off waivers. Didn't Mm -hmm. think much of it because he hasn't done shit all year. Hopefully we're allowed to cuss. Are we allowed to cuss on this? I haven't heard it get censored in any of the other ones. So, I mean. Okay, good. Um, So he hasn't done anything on any of their games. And then he went off this week. So I'm happy. I'm a happy camper. And he wins my spot for this week. Yeah, Camaro was great. And honestly, that game surprised me on the whole. I really did not think the Saints were going to just – absolutely mud stomp the, the Raiders mud like they stomp. did. I mean, the Raiders have not been great, but with the, the Saints dealing with all those injuries, the Raiders being relatively healthy outside of, you know, Darren Waller was out again, and then mm-hmm. Devontae Adams dealing with the flu coming in. We all, at least I, as a hopeful fantasy owner, thought, hey, flu game, Devontae Adams. We're getting 10 for 185 <laughs> and two touchdowns. I was quickly rewarded with one catch for three yards. So the Raiders got romped. Alvin Kamara was the the romp commander. It wasn't a good scene for Las Vegas. My, uh, as you're going to be very shocked, my performer of the week, Christian McCaffrey, the guy, his first basically full game with the 49ers, getting integrated into that system, learning the playbook, having more than a couple days to do so. And he immediately is the entire team. Passing Mm -hmm. touchdown, receiving touchdown, rushing touchdown. I made the joke during that game. I was like, you remember my whole criticism of the trade was, why are you investing so much in a guy at a position you don't really need when your biggest weakness is still the quarterback? And they said, you know what, Bran? Screw you. We're going to make McCaffrey the quarterback. He's going to throw the touchdown, Mm -hmm. and you're going to shut up. And then on top of it, just to really make me look like a moron, Jimmy G had one of his best games passing of the season. I believe he was 21 for 25 for about – 280 and a couple touchdowns. So Jimmy played well. Um, McCaffrey was a beast. Again, allowing me to kind of victory lap a little bit this year for all the people who said don't draft him in fantasy. So I'm enjoying that. But ultimately, I'm still not sure how I feel about McCaffrey and the 49ers going forward in the playoffs. Like, do you think, Maddie, after watching this performance from McCaffrey, that he makes the 49ers contenders in the NFC? Do you think this move is what the 49ers want it to be and will push them into true, true contention. I don't think they're in true, true contention, but also 
I think that it boosts them a little bit. I think that with Shanahan, you can never count them out, right? We've mm. we've seen him do it before. Um, he's resourceful, obviously. We know that he's creative. So I'm not counting them out, but I don't think this is a I don't think the CMC trade makes this a guaranteed in. What about yeah, you? I, I agree. I, I think people are definitely going to get caught up in this because, like I said, it's his first full game with the Niners, and people are going to think, oh, is this just what the Niners are going to be now that they have McCaffrey? Like, they're going to be able to have this crazy weapon who is arguably now the most talented player on an offense that was already ridiculously talented. But 49ers didn't even have Debo in this game. So it just shows you how explosive the offense can be. I just want to caution people that they face the Rams – who are having an extremely down year. They are very middle of the pack in terms of points per game allowed. It's not like this was a a stout defense. It's not like they were facing the Eagles. Uh, So I'll put it this way. I think the 49ers, if I had to pick right now, have a great shot to reach the NFC title game. I would be surprised if they could, again, with Jimmy at quarterback, I'm still not a huge Jimmy believer. Um, I would be surprised if they were able to like overcome those two big games, the NFC championship game and the Super Bowl, and walk away with a ring. I just don't fully buy it yet. But listen, they got off to as good of a start as you can possibly get to with McCaffrey in the fold. So I'll be interested mm-hmm. to see how it plays out. Yeah. And I also feel like this is going to help. I mean, Debo said it himself. It's going to help take some pressure off of him. Once he's able to just like play and it's not all riding on Debo, I think that we're going to see a big shift. And I think that that's where we're going to see a lot more of Christian McCaffrey's. Um, relief that comes in and his his benefit to the 49ers sure and again with Debo in the fold too like you know now what we haven't seen a full a full complement of snaps McCaffrey play alongside Debo very curious to see how that plays out because as much as I made the joke of you know Jimmy's gonna bungle it when they throw these guys all over the field like you can really line a lot of these guys up anywhere like you can put Use check in the slot. You could put Debo mm-hmm. out wide, McCaffrey out wide, any of them in the backfield. You could put Kittle in the backfield if you want. He'll be just fine back there, I promise. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, I think the 49ers are super, super talented team. Also, you've got just the NFC in general is not super deep. So I think yeah. they have one of the most talented rosters. I just – you look at the all the contending teams, and the 49ers clearly have the weakest quarterback of the bunch, regardless of whether you're a Jimmy G truther or not. I think pretty much everyone understands Jimmy G is worse than Jalen Hurts at the very least in the NFC. And then you go to the AFC, mm-hmm. you've got Mahomes, Allen. He's just not on that level. But maybe he can maybe he can do enough. I mean, they were, you know, a quarter away from winning a Super Bowl over Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs a few years ago, and they didn't have Christian McCaffrey back then. So well, I was gonna say, who knows? Maybe it won't even be up to Jimmy G. Right. Yeah. Christian <laughs> McCaffrey can just throw four touchdowns himself and it'll be totally fine. They might put so, Kittle back there to take a snap or two. I, I don't know. I would love to see that. Have that long <laughs> I flowing hair, too. you know, him just trucking people at the quarterback. Basically turn him into Taysom Hill. I think he'd be better at it, honestly, but <laughs> we'll see if that comes to fruition. So we go from a team that is one of the favorites in the NFC to a team that is sort of bottom of the barrel, but is now showing a little bit of hope. We've got the Bears and Justin Fields. So the Bears themselves – don't get this twisted, got smacked by the Cowboys. That was the highest, I believe, Mm -hmm. the highest scoring game of the week in terms of total points, 49-29 in favor of the Cowboys. But Justin Fields now has put together two straight really good weeks, the first of which I saw in person against the Patriots on Monday Night Football when Justin Fields was running all over what was supposed to be our calling card, the Patriots' defense, and -hmm. just making them look silly. I mean – you, you have a coach like Bill Belichick, you assume, you know, even if Fields does that in the first half, he may not come out and do it in the second half because Belichick's going to be like, all right, this is what they're doing. We're going to stop. We couldn't stop it. Fields seems to finally be finding some sort of rhythm as a quarterback because they're allowing him to run more, run more efficiently, designing more runs. Design for more. Yeah. Yeah. It, so runs. it seems like he's definitely improving. Do you think this is the start of him truly making the leap? And not only that maybe becoming the best quarterback out of his class because that class is turning out to be fairly disappointing. Yeah, I thought Trevor Lawrence was coming along. And after this week, I was like, oh, maybe not. Um, Okay, so here's the thing with Justin Fields. I feel like in the short term, absolutely, he is progressing. I think that, like you said, they started – designing runs for him they came out and they said that they went back to watch Ravens film to see how Lamar Jackson had his design runs how they were allowing him to execute these big plays um and that they were trying to mimic that and I think that in the short term that's going to benefit him so much however what I'm seeing happen now is he's 
his pocket presence is just kind of trash. Could that be because that offensive line is terrible and scary? I don't know. They did upgrade a little bit, but you can tell that he still doesn't have that trust. He drops his eyes, and then he does that thing that Patrick Mahomes did last year where he gets panicky and he, like, he perceives the rush coming even when it's not there, and he scrambles when he doesn't have to just because he knows his legs are a threat. That's what's going to kill him in the long term, right? We still need him to be a fully developed quarterback because if not, we're going to watch things happen that happen to Lamar where he's going to start getting shut down or he's going to end up getting hurt. So for a long term, I don't know that it's great unless they do something, they bring him in and they try to you know, develop those areas that he's struggling in. But for the short term, he looks beautiful running. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I think I'm taking this as encouraging for Fields' development, Development, you know, more so for a play-calling perspective and the team committing to him than, you know, just Justin Fields himself. Like, obviously, mm-hmm. we're going to need to see an improvement in the passing, in the pocket presence. All of that stuff is vital for a quarterback to succeed in this league. You can't just be a runner and hope that things work out. That's how you end up with Taysom Hill, and he doesn't play <laughs> except for being a gadget player. So I totally agree with you, but it's nice to see – the Bears finally kind of understanding what they have and that he is a work in progress, but while they're progressing him, accentuating his strengths, calling more runs for him, and then they can fix some of the pocket present stuff later on. Because to be quite honest, right now, obviously you want to improve that stuff anytime, like if it's possible, but he doesn't have the receivers or the line for that to be like something that they lean on right now. Like they need to find somebody to help him out in the pass game as much mm-hmm. as they need to help Justin Fields be comfortable in that pocket. I saw um, a tweet recently that was like, we got all these quarterbacks. So Josh Allen made a huge leap when he got Stephon Diggs into the fold. Jalen mm-hmm. Hurts is making a huge leap now that he has A.J. Brown in the fold. Tua appearing to make a pretty huge leap with Tyreek Hill in the fold. We need to get Justin Fields somebody that's not – I like Darnell Mooney, but, you know, better than Darnell Mooney and who's not Equinemius St. Brown and who's not Dante Pettis, whose name I have seen way too much lately, including against the Patriots. I'm done with Mm -hmm. Dante Pettis. So I think you give Justin Fields a year, um, you get him a receiver or two. You know, they have a bunch of draft picks as well. If you can get him an established receiver and maybe a rookie that you can develop. I like the trajectory for Justin Fields. I don't expect the Bears to make some late playoff push because of how Fields is playing. You also see their defense is, isn't worth a damn. Defense and they, is terrible. And they yeah. just traded away Roquan Smith. So obviously they're not really planning to fully contend. Uh, so we've got Justin Fields. Like I said, I'm excited mm. seeing what he can do. The Bears in a weird spot. Don't know whether I'd call that trade good or bad, but either way, they're loaded in draft picks for this upcoming draft uh, to hopefully help him out and now fill a hole on the defensive side of the ball. In the NFC, we'll go with another team that had a lot of hype, still has a decent amount of hype, but one that I wasn't necessarily buying. So the Giants finally lost. The Jets also lost. We've got the New York teams potentially coming back to reality here a little bit. Maddie, do you think it's in – what's your take on them losing? Is this actually back to reality, back to the status quo, or is this just sort of a speed bump for the two New York teams as we head into the remainder of the season? So we don't have to talk about trades anymore, about the trade anymore, because I've, right. already, I've already said my piece there. Um, <laughs> just wrong player. Um, I feel like, yes, we're starting to see a little bit of that. Can I just be honest? I love Wink, Wink Martindale, and mm-hmm. I feel like he was a big reason for their success, the way he's he has adapted his defense per team that they've faced. I think eventually that kind of – your defense can only do so much – I mean, what happened this week is Saquon just kind of got shut down compared mm-hmm. to what he's been doing. So I think that teams have kind of started to be able to figure them out just a little bit. They don't have any more tools in their bag, any secrets in their bag, I don't think. So I feel like we've reached the height of what the Giants can do this year. Yeah, I, I do worry about the Giants' outlook going forward just because Saquon is their only guy. I, I'm a Wandale Robinson fan. I don't think Wandale Robinson is their savior as far as offensive game planning is concerned. Uh, you know, Not that anybody was counting on a Kadarius Tony return, but he's out of the picture completely as well, so he won't be helping them out. Um, I mean, what a trade for the Chiefs, by the way. I feel like they're going to maximize his potential, and we're going to be looking at Kadarius Tony as a top 20 wide receiver next year because it's the Chiefs. Do you think so? I, I don't top 20 might be aggressive, but I just, I can't get that one game that Kadarius Tony was just dropping dudes out of their ankles out of my head. And now <laughs> that he's going to a team like the chiefs that 
has relative opportunity for wide receivers, at least next year. Um, and, you know, I feel like they recognize talent and they know what they want to do with guys. So it'll be, it'll be fun to watch. Um, but I, I do think the Giants are a little bit fraudulent in the sense that they weren't going to make any noise in the playoffs this year. They can still backdoor, not backdoor, they're six and two. They can still make the playoffs. Um, mm-hmm. I don't expect it to, I don't expect them to make any noise. And then the Jets, um, the Jets losing to my Patriots. Hallelujah. We closed the gap in that division a little bit. I am not enjoying being a fan of a last place team right now which we still are even after that game but But you won your bets didn't you i did i did win that bet my game picks we'll get into our next week's game picks pretty soon but i did get that pick right which was nice um especially since i made it before we got trounced by the bills or the bears on monday (laughs) night so you know we're we're bouncing back a little bit but yeah the the patriots beat the jets on the back of five nick folk field goals and one touchdown Mm -hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And also, we kind of saw that Zach Wilson is reckless. It, does yeah, not doesn't make, like protecting the ball. Makes some rough decisions at times. I mean, Robert Sala did come out and say that you know this was an uncharacteristically bad game from him, where he wasn't protecting the ball. But like, you can't have those kinds of meltdowns. You don't see top tier quarterbacks make those kinds of meltdowns. I remember before the season, I believe it was Dan Orlovsky was saying like Zach Wilson can make a, a Patrick Mahomes sort of leap this season. And I was, first of all, I was like, okay, I mean, this guy knows a lot more about the quarterback position than I do. I'll have my eye on him for sure. But I was skeptical. And now we're seeing this. I don't, I don't think Zach Wilson's their guy. I don't think Zach Wilson's going to be able to lead the jets to a playoff appearance, at least not a successful one. And it also raises some eyebrows that they elevated Mike white to be the backup this past Mm -hmm. week after how well Joe Flacco has played or played in the first few weeks, like one of the leading passers in the NFL, you can't tell me that Mike White wasn't elevated to put a little heat on Zach Wilson because everybody knows Joe Flacco's not the future of the Jets, but Mike White played a good chunk of games, is actually young, and if Zach Wilson keeps playing this poorly, like that noise is going to get a little louder. I feel like the Jets almost want him looking over his shoulder just a little bit, and they know an aging vet isn't going to be the one to take his job, but Mike White, who knows? 100%. I do think that losing Brees Hall was obviously like the big Mm -hmm. thing here. That was a big hit. But the thing is, is their defense played decent. I mean, Mac Jones was sacked six times and the Jets just couldn't do anything with it. Like he was given opportunities. You can tell that he's not focused. It almost looks like the game's moving too fast for him, which is a huge concern because at that point, like you're having to go back down to basics. He's regressing instead of progressing so hopefully this lights a fire under his rear i don't i but it can only do so much i apologize my dog is being incredibly needy tonight (laughs) we have a special guest on the podcast matt he looks like a raccoon you guys he's so (laughs) ugly but he's so cute and sweet um just needs a lot of attention you know i would like to know what your dog thinks of zach wilson dog do you believe zach wilson has that dog in him as an expert on the subject Silent. anything that's pretty much how i think everybody feels about zach wilson we're all just he's like is that even a question i just yeah. want my ball he's like absolutely not so no he's crawling up here because i have this ball um fair but it squeaks and it's so annoying that i won't let him have it so that's <laughs> that's what he's wanting you're, right now you're gonna hear that in the background of the entire podcast i totally understand that but hey Listen, more annoying wants- than Zach Wilson throwing the ball away. <laughs> the dog wants what he wants. But yeah, Zach Wilson not looking great. I don't know that he's going to lead the Jets anywhere notable this year. And that 2021 draft class is truly shaping up to be massively Trash. disappointing. Um, at, it's tough when you think that Trey Lance is almost looking like the most promising prospect. And that's only because he hasn't played. So at least has the element of like unknown to him. We don't know what he's going to be able to do over – a slate of, you know, more than three games that he can start in a row. Uh, Everyone else is just, meh, not not impressive whatsoever. Well, Trey Lance has Shanahan to fall back on also, which makes a huge difference. Right. But that class with so many guys selected in the first round and then even Davis Mills, who's just tank commander right now, uh, it's not going great. But we'll move on. Pickens isn't terrible, though. I mean, he's I've seen a couple of things here and there. So I don't know. But anyways, we'll move on. We'll move on from the New York teams and get to a subject that is 
very close to my heart, but is also going to give me chest pains when we talk. Oh, about I thought it. we were going on quarterback. Sorry for bringing up new ones. Oh, you're fine. Um, <laughs> this is your weekly Kyle Pitts update. If you'll recall, last week I officially broke up with Kyle Pitts. I said I will start essentially anyone over him. Kyle Pitts is on a team that doesn't throw the ball enough. Um, when they do throw the ball, you know, it might be to him, but it's going to be a couple times a game, not super quality targets because their pass is coming from Marcus Mariota. And, uh, you know, his snap count wasn't even what we wanted it to be most weeks. He's well below the full-time player that we thought he would be. Kyle Pitts decided that this would be the week that he would go for 80 yards and a touchdown on my bench while I have Tampa Bay Buccaneers tight end Cade Otten in my starting lineup, who rattled off an impressive two receptions for 15 yards. Kyle Pitts, do you hate me is my question. What have I done to you to warrant this sort of on and off production where every time I start you, you disappear and now I bench you and you look like the tight end we all hoped you would be. I don't know what to do anymore. I'm losing my mind. Am I wrong? Am, am I off base here? Like what is happening? I don't understand what to do anymore with Kyle Pitts. Fantasy football is fun. Um, this is like a cat and mouse game, right? This is like he's playing hard to get with you. What are you going to do about it? It's it's cat and mouse, except I, I don't know which role I am in the cat. And mouse. I guess I'm the cat chasing the fantasy points that are. I'm the loser. Yeah. <laughs> whoever whoever I am, I'm losing the battle. But I guess I'm the cat chasing the fantasy points that are the mouse. But I'm also just getting my paw stuck in the air vent on my way there and need a trip to the vet because – I, uh, I don't know. And the worst part, too, is I could have had Greg Dulcich, who at least had four catches for 80-something yards this past week for the Broncos. But I was like, I don't want to invest in any more Broncos. I've been there, done that. That yeah. only caused me pain, too. So the tight end position, again, I advocated for it last week. I'm advocating for it again. Remove it. No more tight end position in fantasy football. Make it another flex. And those of you masochists who want to draft one early, like Kelsey or Andrews, can do so and put them <laughs> in your flex and the rest of us can stop trying to play the roulette of Kyle Pitts, Greg Dulcich, Kate Otten, One-Eye Daniel Bellinger, Hayden Hurst, Hunter Henry, whatever other garbage tight ends are out there that you try to throw into your lineup and just pray <laughs> that they get more than three targets in a game. I just, Kyle Pitts, you've broken me. You've broken me. You've led me to my worst fantasy season in my 12 years playing the game, and I will not forget this. Just know that. Are you going to start Kyle Pitts next week? Maddie, you want to know the worst part? I'm going to the Falcons game next week. So I have a buddy who is a pro scout for the Falcons who has hooked us up. We're going to visit him. We're going to have a nice little weekend and then go to Falcons Chargers. Am I going to start Kyle Pitts? Probably. And I'm going to hate it because he's going to break my heart in person. And I'm going to watch Michael Pruitt probably catch another touchdown for the Falcons. If he's even still on the roster, to be honest, I have no idea what his status is because he was barely on the roster when he caught the touchdown last time. He got called up the day of. So, yes, I'm probably going to start him. Yes, I'm probably going to be in more pain. And, yes, we're going to have another Kyle Pitts update that is just as, if not more, heated than this one. So that's where we're at with Kyle goddamn Pitts. Just let Brandon score. I mean, come on, Kyle. I'm, Stop I'm, being a prude. I'm, I'm so, my fantasy team scored 42 points total this week. We don't have to talk about oh it. My God. Um, okay. On to something lighter. Pray for Bran. On to something Brand. lighter. And this is a discussion that will not include Kyle Pitts. It is our MVP candidates draft. So we brought up this uh, segment last week where we, Maddie and I, will draft a certain topic, whether it's players or just any abstract idea. Uh, that we come up with. So this week's draft, we will be alternating picks and we will be seeing who comes up with the best list of five MVP candidates. Now, obviously we are not just ranking MVP candidates. We're picking from a pool. So don't roast Maddie for not having Josh Allen. Cause she's not going to, I'm going to pick him and don't roast me for not having whoever she takes with her first pick. It's just a draft. It's kind of just a fun way to break this down and get into some guys who are more Low key potential MVP candidates if things break a certain way, because this will force us to get 10 guys into this conversation. So, Maddie had the first pick last week in our QB wide receiver duo draft, with me having the first pick this week in the MVP candidates draft. I think it's pretty obvious. I just said it taking Josh Allen. Doesn't have an MVP yet, so he's got that narrative on his side. 
The Bills are rolling over everybody. Josh Allen's been a monster. It's just an easy argument to make. I'm sad. I mean, I think that's all I can say about that. <laughs> so no, Josh Allen for you, sorry. I will go Jalen Hurts because he has every tool around him to set him up for success. I like the man. I think that I think he deserves it. So I'm going to go Jalen Hurts. I agree with you. I think that's the correct next pick. I honestly, I wasn't sure if you were going to go with him or with Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Um, I want to look at the Eagles schedule really quick. So the Eagles coming up, a pretty easy. Schedule. This is the Eagles rest of season schedule, right? So as much as I think Josh Allen is the odds on favorite, I'm pretty sure we all know that if the Eagles go undefeated, Jalen Hurts is probably winning the MVP. Um, that's a tall task, even with the quality of opponents being so bad. But here are the opponents. We've got the Texans, the Commanders, the Colts, the Packers, the Titans, the Giants, the Bears, the Cowboys, the Saints, and the Giants again. What are the real tests in there? The Titans are playing relatively well. Derrick Henry is looking like old Derrick Henry. And then probably the Cowboys. I mean, the Packers, maybe if they do anything at the trade deadline to help themselves out. Otherwise, and overall, that's not a tough schedule. So the Eagles, I think, at the at the worst, are staring at what fifteen and two. Uh, they actually have a shot at going seventeen undefeated. And 0. Yeah, yeah, they have a shot at going seventeen and zero, which is absurd for a guy like Jalen Hurts, who is you know this is this is his leap forward year. Like when we saw the Patriots have that undefeated season, which. I don't want to talk about it beyond what I'm saying right now because that broke my heart too. Uh, that was Tom Brady just in the peak of his powers. We knew what Tom mm-hmm. Brady was already. Like to see Jalen Hurts leading a team like this, obviously the defense is super talented and they put weapons around him, but for Jalen Hurts to hold it down, ripped up the, the Steelers this past week uh, with A.J. Brown and A.J. Brown also getting penalized for celebrating too much. You know, <laughs> it's, it's incredible what they've done and I would love to see Jalen Hurts get an MVP. With that said, I'm taking Patrick Mahomes with my next pick. Mm-hmm. Um him and him and Allen. He had I a crazy still, game this week. Yeah, I, yeah, I know. So I think him and Allen are still the top two uh, MVP candidates. Or sorry, top two. You think? Oh, it's like you think that that's the top two? No, no, like, no, not ahead. top two MVP candidates right now. Top two quarterbacks overall. I mean, Hurts again. Just the fact that it's only been seven games. I'm fully convinced that Jalen Hurts is an elite NFL quarterback. I just think you'd be hard pressed to find people who hey, rank your NFL quarterbacks that are really going to put Hurts over Mahomes right now. So I'm happy to have the two biggest names probably in the discussion. But no, mm-hmm. I do think I do think Hurts is firmly second in that ranking right now. So I've got Allen and Mahomes. You've got Hurts. Who's the next pick? This is where it gets hard because that's really where I cap off my actual prob- – pro- like who has a yeah. chance to actually win, right? right? So I did have Joe Burrow was going to be next on my list. How's the After- going? After tonight, I'm like, like that's why I'm just like looking at the TV. Like, do I just go with it? My other choice was Lamar Jackson. That's kind of a toss up mm-hmm. right now. I guess I'll go Joe Burrow just because I feel like I, and we'll just go Joe Burrow. No, I nah, think- I'm gonna go Lamar Jackson. I'm gonna go Lamar Jackson. Okay, I wow. you can have Burrow if you. The want hard, to. the hard pivot to Lamar Jackson. So Lamar Jackson mm-hmm. was my preseason MVP pick, and then after his first like three games, I was like. Cool. That's mm-hmm. going to be correct. And then not so much lately, but I mean, plenty of time left. If the Ravens can squeak yeah. into the playoffs, it's possible, but interesting. The thing that made uh, me switch my mind is we still have a contract that needs to get done. He wants, he just wants to win a Super Bowl. He just wants to get as far as he can. He wants to make it to the playoffs. I feel like he has a little bit more in him. The Ravens just need to help him out a little bit. So, yeah. I don't know. I'm going to go Lamar Jackson. All right. I respect that. And with that said, I will go Joe Burrow. Uh, Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not the best game tonight for the Bengals overall, but his stat line is actually, he's recovering it relatively well. I mean, he's, I think I just had it up 24 for 32 for 218 and two touchdowns, one pick as it stood right now. Uh, No Jamar Chase, but listen, if you're evaluating MVP candidates, honestly saying, oh, Joe Burrow doesn't have Jamar Chase. We can't really say that that is like a, Uh, oh poor joe burrow thing like that's already an embarrassment of riches to have t higgins tyler boyd and jamar chase so like you should still play well without jamar chase if that's if you're a real mvp candidate and he's bouncing back a little bit this game isn't what we wanted to see but that's what puts a guy you know fifth or so in mvp voting like you said there's really three guys right now in that true discussion but it's a long season and there's other guys that can enter that conversation and elevate themselves. I think Burrow's one of them. This is one bad game. He can bounce back from this. The Bengals as a team 
have been finding their stride lately. That's why this is going to be a pretty unfortunate result for them. They are going to lose this game, but Burrow still in that conversation. I can't tell if you're an optimist or a realist. I can't tell. An right optimist now. or a realist. That's a. I, I like to think I toe the line with both. Sometimes, here's what I'll say. I think in the NFL, optimism and realism almost go hand in hand because chaos rules in the NFL. That's true. So like, anything really can happen. And when you have what do we have? This is week eight. So we've got nine weeks left of the regular season. Like the season can flip on its head still. So I just look at it like, like, no, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, uh, I don't know, Kenny Pickett can win MVP because anything can happen. But with a guy like Burrow, it can. <laughs> so Maddie, who's your third pick? You know what? F it. I'm going to go to a, mm. why okay. not? Why not? Okay. Tua. I don't hate that, especially given what my next pick is probably going to be. If you would have asked me preseason, I probably would have said Justin Herbert. His offensive line fell apart. It was the right side. Then we lost later. So he just can't do anything right now. And mm-hmm. it's it's looking very bleak. So Tua's got that dog in him. As long as he stops headbutting people and diving, I think we'll be right. fine. No. But he's got he's got I mean he's got Tyreek Hill he's got Waddle down the field and he, he's getting the ball out quick thanks to that concussion so I'm throwing him in there. I like that. All right, my next pick I actually s- switched it so I was originally going to have somebody that was related to Tua in a way. We'll see if I get to him my fifth pick, but with my fourth pick, Geno Smith. <laughs> I actually think he legitimately needs to be in this discussion. Um, Do you? You think it's like a legit I, pick? So, so, okay, season ends right now. Season ends tomorrow. Geno Smith probably isn't getting a ton of votes. The Seahawks, I thought this team was going to be actually in contention for the number one draft pick coming into the year. That's how bad they were because you were coming into the year with Geno Smith and Drew Locke competing for the quarterback position. No other strengths on that team really to speak of other than, I mean, I liked Kenneth Walker um, Mm -hmm. and knowing that they, that he was probably going to get the lead back role at some point during the year. I was like, okay, I like their run game. They have good receivers too. But other than that, so many weaknesses up and around this team and in the division that we thought would be better than it is above them. Like we thought the Rams would be really good. The Niners would be really good. The Seahawks are playing incredibly well. And Geno Smith is I'll just say the reason for that. They're in first place in the NFC West. Gino is throwing dots on a regular basis. Like I'm in awe of what he has done with his career this late. Like I remember him being just in shambles on the jets when he first started. And now to see what he's doing, like he looks like a totally different quarterback. So I, I think if the season ended today, he's probably not getting many votes as long as I'm actually not sure how the voting works. Is it you get first, second, and third place votes? Those are the only ones that count. Maybe he'd get a couple thirds. I mean, I don't know. But I think he's got the narrative on his side. He's got the play on his side. I mean, he is leading the league in completion percentage. Like, Geno Smith. Like, that sounds like if you came back and told me that preseason, you were like, yeah, I'm time traveling from week A. Yeah, Geno Smith's leading in completion percentage and the Seahawks are in first place. I'd be like, oh, that guy's winning MVP. Like, he has to. I don't think we have a choice. So I will I say, though, the remaining schedule is not as light as what it was at the beginning. Like, where we're at now and what he's going to have to face, that's why I'm just like – I like, they haven't faced a whole lot. They have to – I mean, they're facing – the Chiefs It's going to be tough for them. The Bucks still have a top 10 um, defense against the pass. They have uh, – Well, Raiders, we're not going to count them. But face the Rams, 49ers again. And the 49ers essentially kind of shut them down. So Mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll see how he pans out the rest of the year. But I don't hate that pick. Yeah, we'll see. I I like the reasoning. That's a big part of it, too, is that he's got the opportunity to prove himself going forward, right? Like he's already Mm -hmm. he's inserted himself like, hey, keep your eye on me. I'm real. We're eight weeks in. I'm still playing well. My team's in first. Like you have to take me seriously now. And now if he does knock off like – the Bucks and the 49ers and they even they play the Chiefs they play the Rams twice still who again are disappointing but are still probably many people will think they're better than the Seahawks overall um and will probably make a move at the deadline as well the Rams will I think it, it's there's a good opportunity for Gino to prove himself and truly put himself in that discussion I don't think it's out of the question that he could win that award this year he's not in my top three candidates by any means but mm-hmm. he's it's possible so that's all I'm saying 
I almost feel embarrassed to say this because this quarterback lined up behind the wrong offensive lineman last year. Oh, no. Give me Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins. Only because of Jefferson. Let's be honest. I get it. I get it. I mean, the Vikings have a really good record. Um, My issue with that was just you look at the stats all the way around and there's really not much that sticks out to you about Kirk Cousins. No. Because I was looking into this earlier and I was like, you know, trying to think of good teams because that is a requirement to win MVP, at least in the NFL. Mm -hmm. You have to be on a really good team. So that was not shade at Russell Westbrook from a few years ago with the Thunder because I do think he deserved it. But, you know, it's a requirement in the NFL. You have to have a great team to win MVP. And they do. The Vikings do. They're, what, 6-1? and one? Um, And Kirk Cousins, though, Kirk Cousins 14th in the league in passing yards. And then touchdowns, he's got 11 touchdowns to five interceptions. It's really not much to write home about. But if he keeps kind of commanding the lead of a really good team and can improve on those numbers a little bit, I don't think it's crazy. And again, we're in the weeds here of the NFL. I was going to say, I feel like we should reiterate that. Brandon's making us play this game when I think that my last two picks, there's no way that's ever going to happen. But I'm going to play the game. This is my game and you will play it. And now with my final pick, a guy who is not a quarterback, which means he definitely won't win MVP. Huge pet peeve of mine, by the way, that that's a thing. I agree. I agree. I hate that. It's also so stupid to me that the NFL MVP is a quarterback only award 90% of the time we've established this. And then you've got offensive player of the year that in theory, by definition, quarterbacks should be eligible for, they are offensive players. <laughs> they don't mm-hmm. win that. So it's like they have this unspoken rule that one award is quarterbacks and one is non quarterbacks, whatever. Besides the point, Tyree kill is who I'm going with. And that oh. was why I said it related to Tua. That's surprising to me. Tyree kill is maybe having the most low-key, record-breaking season so far that we've ever seen. Tyreek Hill's on pace to break the single-season receiving yardage record. Tyreek Hill is on pace to be the first-ever 2,000-yard receiver. I don't know. Starting quarterback was out for a few games. Yeah, exactly. Like, he he doesn't care. He doesn't care who's under center. Um, You look up, this guy has 180 yards every game. Like, it's when he was on the Chiefs, you had – a bunch of down games sort of mixed in. Like Tyreek Hill was that huge boom bust, but game breaker player that defenses had to key in on. And sometimes they did it effectively while Mahomes just chucked touchdowns to everyone else. So he's still worth, you know, whatever he's being paid. And he's still one of the best receivers in the NFL with the dolphins. The numbers are there every single week. And I know mm-hmm. we have an extra game now than we did when Calvin Johnson had that record. And technically Hill isn't on pace to break it. If there was only 16 games, but nevertheless, he's on pace to break one of not the most, un- maybe one of the most unbreakable looking records, like knowing what the NFL is nowadays. I think that's incredibly impressive. I don't think people are talking about it enough. And if he keeps on that pace, Tyreek Hill is what kind of makes this Dolphins offense lethal. Oh, yeah. Like, well, I do feel like a big part of that is that Waddle's on the other side and that kind of mm-hmm. opens up one. Of, you have to For choose. Sure. You can't shut them both down. For sure. So I think that having him is obviously – beneficial but i mean to come in to be quarterback proof first of all he's learned a new offense i mean i agree i mean he would 100 percent be in the talks yeah i just i just wanted to give him a little nod because the last year i was firmly on the cooper cup should be mvp train um aaron Rodgers had an amazing season but you know cooper cup the fact that he wasn't he should have been the favorite for that award but it is what it is quarterback award mvp um but Wanted to give uh, Tyree Kill a little bit of love there. So, Maddie, who is your final pick? I'm sure this will be uh, a guy oh, who we is were definitely done. going to win. I believe since I started it off, that was my fifth pick. So you've got Jalen, Lamar, Tua, and Kirk. So you've got one more to throw at us. Oh, can I pick Jalen again? <laughs> I picked Jalen, Hurts, um, uh, Pierce, he's off the board. Sorry. We'll go – we'll just say that Tom Brady gets his shit together. He has the breakup glow up. Mm-hmm. And he goes off. Okay. I like that. It might be his last season. We'll let him have it. I like that. There was that whole TikTok trend going around of like, oh, my boy's girl broke up with him before the game. And you just see him like stewing like right in the <laughs> locker room before they go out, just bobbing their head, looking like they're about to kill somebody. That might be Tom Brady for just this next year and maybe the next 10. Because at this point, what reason does he have to quit football? He may as well just keep playing. And like I said before the show – uh, Tom Brady, I don't know if anybody realizes this, is still leading the league in passing yards. And I know sometimes that's not 
the best thing because it just means your team is down a lot. I was going to say he's having a chunk. Yeah, <laughs> Stafford led the league in passing yards a million times on the Lions for that exact reason. So it is indicative of the Bucks' struggles as well because he only has nine touchdowns. But again, touchdown mm-hmm. interception ratio, nine to one. Brady's numbers are still salvageable in terms of an MVP race if he can – turn the team itself around. But as of now, that's a huge ask. I don't think it happens, but, but man, I mean, a possibility Gronk may come back, which we know Brady needs a good tight end. I'm sure at Ross this point, out of retirement. Yeah. I think Brady would probably agree with you at this point. Like, let's just get rid of the tight end position because yeah. he can't get a good one. Nah. Um, but I don't know. It, Stranger things have happened, right? It's the Agreed. NFL. Get Moss out of retirement. Get James White back in Moss. the mix. Give him a new hip or something. Get Julian Edelman in there. You know, he could he could turn things around. <laughs> Tom Brady goes full like robot mode. Kyler Murray's controlling him. It's like a video game. Oh no, Ky- no, Kyler Murray's controlling him like Ratatouille. He's just inside his helmet. Like Tom, run. <laughs> and Tom's just like, no, Kyler, my legs don't work like that. All right. Let's get into next week's game picks. So this past week was a little bit better for me. Um, one of the picks is not going well. The game is not quite over yet. But I did pick the Bengals. I believe it was minus three versus the Browns. They are currently losing by 19. However, my other two picks did go well. And those were the Patriots against the Jets. I believe the Patriots were minus two. And they covered that. And then my other pick, I'm blanking on what it was. But I know it hit. Give me one moment. Uh, what do we have? We had uh, Seahawks minus two versus the Giants. So those hit. Hey, two for three. That's a I'll good. Take that. I'll take that. We'll That's take that. A That's win. a winning record. If we a can win's a win. Week, if we can do that every week, we'll be in the money. So these next week's picks, uh, I feel relatively good about. And so I'm starting off with the Falcons plus three versus the Chargers. Not just because I'm going to the game and will be a pseudo Falcons fan for a week, but you look at the Falcons schedule. Even the games that they've lost, they have kept tight pretty much every time. Mm -hmm. And I think in our heads, in my head at least, the Chargers are a lot more talented team. But they're not the scary monster that we thought they would potentially be coming into the year. So I think the Falcons do enough to keep that game close. I think plus three is a reasonable line, so I'm going with that. Um, My next pick, Patriots minus six versus the Colts. Call it a bias pick. Call it whatever you want. The Patriots defense got back on track this past week against the Jets after getting drubbed by the Bears. Now they get to face a essentially rookie signal caller in Sam Ellinger. He's getting his first taste of starting action in the NFL. Uh, I don't think he's going to light the Patriots defense up. Jonathan Taylor still isn't playing great and has been battling nagging injuries. I think the Patriots can win this game by a touchdown fairly easily. By the way, the yeah. Colts are 32nd in total offensive DVOA. They are the worst good? in the league. That's that's good, right? I think I heard it's like golf, right? You want to you want to have the lowest? And, no, they are the oh. last. They're 32nd oh, oh, okay. in ranking. So they are uh yeah, so that's, they're so that's under good. 25%. Got it. Okay. So the Colts are a really good football team is what I've gathered from Maddie's <laughs> stat. That's awesome. And then Finally, we've got the Vikings minus three versus the Commanders. I think the Vikings at six and one, six and one. I want to make sure I'm right with that. They've had their bye, right? So yeah, six and one are facing the Commanders. And I just am not a Commanders believer. Taylor Heineke, I love him. I do like that. I don't know if you saw this, Maddie. He, every week that he wins, I think it's that he, or no, I think it's every week he plays like over 60% of snaps. He gets a huge bonus in his contract, like $125,000. And what he's been doing is if he wins that game, he buys Jordans with the team colors of the team he just beat, which is just I respect it. I respect it. Awesome. Sorry, there's apparently a fire. Did somebody Uh, just get murdered outside your house? Listen, I'm in Denver. It may have been Russell Wilson, even though they beat the Jags, but. Knock on wood. He's doing high knees again. He might be high knees and downtown. Somebody took him out. Get out of the road, right? Um, Stop doing this. I don't know if I'm going to get in trouble for this. Yeah. But I'm going to do this anyways. We're not live. Um, (laughs) I was recently invited to join Raya. Do you know what that is? I do not. Okay. It's like a celebrity dating app. How I was invited, I have no idea. Guess who the second person I saw on there was? Okay, it can't be Russell Wilson because he's with Sierra. Tell me it wasn't Russell Wilson. Okay, it wasn't Russell Wilson. Tom Brady, he's single. Heineke. Oh, no. Yes, I was like, what? 
do I slide in the DMs wow. or not? But then I got swiped. I'm probably going to get kicked off after that comment, but the world should know, right? So it was a I, public service announcement, so right? I'm on the show right now saying that I'm picking the Vikings to beat the Commanders by three. Maddie, all I'm saying is that there's a world where you help that happen. I'm not sure of the <laughs> specifics behind it. If you can just keep him, keep Heineke occupied, maybe a little less, you know, studying goes on. Maybe we get sort of a Kyler Murray situation, except instead of Call of Duty, you guys are doing something else. I don't need, hear no evil, see no evil, whatever. Keep, I don't care. I'm just saying, you can make this happen. You can make us go three for three for the first time. That's all I'm saying. I, I love the faith you have in me. Um Maybe I'll take one for the team. I'll let you know. Listen, I'd appreciate it. It would make us look great, make us look credible. I just need my picks to be right. Because as of right now, I think we are exactly 500 because I went one and two the first week and then two and one this past week. So I got to get over that 500 hump and show that everyone that, you know, we're profitable here at Off the Bench. We are. I think we'll win without without me um, interfering. However, we'll see what happens. Or or Heineke's going to be walking away with some purple and white and yellow Jordans next week. So we'll see mm. which way it goes. Um, Maddie, another way that you have a chance to potentially be involved with Taylor Heineke is DFS on FanDuel. So we are launching a new contest, custom off-the-bench DFS contest, opportunity to play against both myself and Maddie, $5 entry, maximum of 150 entries in this contest there is 100 dollars going to the person who finishes in first place 50 dollars for second and some additional prizes for those finishing third through 25th you can use the link fanduel.com slash heavy link will be also in the description of platforms that you are listening on that you know have such descriptions youtube and mm-hmm. the like uh, also probably be in our link tree but yeah, Maddie and I are going to be making some DFS lineups. I assume Maddie will probably I will be not. whooping up on Brandon. Yeah, I, I, listen, I'm just assuming you're not going to use Taylor Heineke, but like, <laughs> you know, you can if you want. Uh, I may choose a slightly better quarterback. But hey, my DFS team last week did pretty well. Somehow didn't finish in the money, even though I had Derrick Henry and um, Tony Pollard. Somebody else who did really – or uh, – it was, was it AJ? No, Jalen Waddle. So I had a bunch of players who went off, but my guess is just that, you know, everyone else in the world also had Derrick Henry because he is as chalk as chalk gets against the Texans, which totally I, understand. He just has his way. Yeah. He does I, whatever he wants in Houston. It's something that he's had like 200 yards in four straight games against it. That's so rude. So rude so to just rude. abuse one team to that degree. So Derrick Henry against the Texans, that is. Do we think Brandon's going to pick Kyle Pitts? There is literally a 0% chance I pick Kyle Pitts in this contest. Literally zero. I may leave the tight end position empty just, just to prove to a point, fight, just to be just petty. To fight the position and then mm-hmm. still finish top 20 because I will spend my money elsewhere on other positions and show people that that's what everyone should be spending their money on because I don't know why the Falcons spent any money or draft capital on a guy that they don't use except – for when it's inconvenient for me and I have to watch him score on my bench while the you are triggered 42 <laughs> points. I want Kyle Pitts and those responsible for his fantasy points prosecuted. I will say this DFS thing is going to be really fun. Totally agree. If you join, you may or may not get your, I, I'm going to talk shit on whoever's in this league. So just know that coming into it, you are fair game. Yeah. So, and I expect the same. Talk your trash to me in the DMs. Let's let's go. Let's make fun. Right. And at this point, with how much Kyle Pitts has sabotaged my actual fantasy team, DFS is all I have. So come at me, everybody. Try and beat me. Uh, my focus is fully into this DFS contest. I'm going to find the best values, the best players. I'm going to be researching night and day so that I can finish first. I feel and like none of you can have the top prize. You and I need to come up with a little bit of a bet, like. Who, I'm down. I'm who, down. We'll keep track of whose lineups ours. are better. Assuming if we keep this promotion mm-hmm. going, I have no idea what the plans are. That's over our heads. But if we do, Maddie and I will keep tabs on which of our lineups are best. I mean, honestly, it'll come down to what is it? 150 entries max. Whoever mm-hmm. finishes 149th and 150th, that's just going to be me and you every week. So I don't know. <laughs> just a matter of who's who. So that listen, this will be a fun contest. Make sure you get in. I'm excited. 150 cap could fill up fast. It's, you know, it's an opportunity to play against us. It's basically like winning a dinner with Tom Brady, who is single. So, you know, it's even more valuable now than it once was. 
Now on to the final segment of this week's podcast, viewer questions. I really only selected one because I thought it was just very appropriate for the holiday and I wanted to give us some time to talk about it. And Maddie, I don't know if you saw this, if you came up with an answer other than mine, I actually didn't even write my answer on our little show. I was going to say, I didn't see your answer. So you don't know who mine is. Mm -mm. I feel like this is everybody's answer. The question is, if you were a Halloween movie director, what team would star in your horror flick? This question comes from Ryan, I believe, DeHammer on Instagram. What team would star in a horror flick? Is, is there any other answer than the Denver Broncos? Is there any other answer? Like, I tried to think of, you can come up with teams that are just bad, so it's horrifyingly bad. The Broncos are not only horrifyingly bad, they continue to find ways to just be impressively incompetent week in and week out. And here's the most horrifying part. We came into this week with rumors that if the Broncos lost this game to the Jaguars, that Nathaniel Hackett would be fired. His job was more or less on the line in this game. Of course he pulled this game out. Of all games. Of course he's going to extend the misery of Broncos fans and anyone else that has to watch this poor team all year. It just, it feels like a never ending problem with the Broncos. You got Russell Wilson. I'm just picturing him in my nightmares. Like you're just fast asleep and you just hear in the darkness, Broncos country. And you're like, what is happening? That's right. That's right. And you just see him like in the mirror behind, like you're brushing your teeth. You look up, you see him, you freak out. And then he's gone. As soon as you like really look at it, I just Russell with his danger, witches and, and Broncos country let's ride. And this team being a, sad 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 team with running backs who were relevant 10 years ago i i feel like there's no other answer mm. so i went a little bit different with this because i don't like to be scared i don't like scary movies Agreed. i don't like that energy i don't sleep at night i just don't mess with it so i went the opposite and i was like okay what team can i make a scary movie out of like these scary okay. movies that are like funny oh sure sure that are like almost like uh making fun of scary movies right Yep. So I'm going to go with the Eagles. And really, it's just because like I want to kick it with Lane Johnson because I think he would be hilarious in one of these movies. I think Jason Kelsey would be hilarious. Jordan Mylotta, are you kidding me? He's just like – he's like the next rock. I'm sure of it. Um, And Jalen Hurts would be cool to be around. A.J. Brown. I just feel like that team would be so funny in that scenario. So I'm going with that. Speaking of which, did you see that Lane Johnson dressed up as um, – as – Kelsey for Halloween. No, I didn't. Wow. He did on his walk and he had like, he do for that. He did the, well, the week before um, people were like making fun of Jason Kelsey's outfit because he was just wearing like a t-shirt that was like baby Huey size. Like boobies looked great, but it was like probably two sizes too small. He's wearing the schmedium. Yeah. It was a schmedium. A little bit of the belly was hanging out. Okay. His hair was just all over the place. He's wearing jeans and flip flops. I'm just and picturing like a, he had like like a, a satchel. Rat doll. This sounds awful. <laughs> I'm about to send you the picture. So fashion obviously wasn't a big deal, but he was like, I don't care about the way I look. Basically, it was just like, I'm, this, I'm here to play football. I don't care about how I look. So Lane Johnson literally repeats the outfit. And he was like, I don't care how I look. Fly, Eagles, fly. And he's like walking in in his flip flops. And that's I don't incredible. know why. It was just so funny. That's so incredible. That's where I went with that one. No, I like that's that. That's a good I mean, question, Ryan. Yeah, it's a really good question. I mean, I thought we're literally recording this podcast on Halloween. And obviously, it's going to come out on November 1st. But I, I felt like it was just too appropriate not to use and too many directions we could go with it. You go on the comedic route. Totally makes sense. AJ Brown mm-hmm. is apparently very funny because after the celebrations that he had this past week, he's first of all doing this, telling people they're too short. And then the one that he got very much in trouble for was pointing at the two guys. And we found out after the fact that he said one guy, two, not enough. So he's just emasculating people. On I his love way, it. Scoring a bunch of touchdowns. That Eagles team is fun. They have all the mojo in the world. So that's mm-hmm. why they're going to win the Super Bowl. So probably not against the Broncos, which is my preseason pick, but we don't have to talk about the damn Broncos anymore. I'm done with them. I'm too close to their stadium as is. I can smell the stench coming. It's too close. I kind of just like, I would love it. I need to get in contact with your girlfriend, but I would love to just like get like a fat head or some sort of cutout to like put in your window to where you're not really paying attention. You just walk in your room and Russ is sitting there. 
Like I've got to figure out a way to make that happen. Right. Just truly, to haunt you a little bit. Truly, if I see any picture of Russell Wilson or Kyle Pitts ever in person, I will bash my head through our wall, potentially floor. Our floor is concrete. Maybe the countertop because it's granite. Whatever's going to hurt me the most and make me not have to think about the pitiful performances that these two are putting everyone through every week, except for Kyle Pitts this week. I I can't do it anymore. I need, Are you going to Tua yourself? I need a nap is what I need. <laughs> you and you know what? You've earned now it. we're at the end of the podcast, it was Frontier Airlines. They're the ones that put me in pain. And they're the reason <laughs> that I'm names. extra angry with Kyle Pitts and Russell Wilson shenanigans. So that's where we're uh, at. Do better, Frontier. Do better. Do better. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Everyone, be sure to join that DFS DFS contest and try and beat mm-hmm. Maddie and I. Maddie and I will also be simultaneously competing against each other and let you know whose lineups were better and let us know whose list of MVP candidates were better. Again, it was a draft format, so she's not going to have Josh Allen. I'm not going to have Jalen Hurts. Doesn't mean it's a stupid list. It's just the way we formatted it. And uh, yeah, so let us know what you think and we will be right back here in your ear holes or potentially eye holes if you watch this on YouTube uh, next week on Tuesday. But for now, Maddie, you got anything left to say? Yeah, hit us in the DMs if you join the DFS League so I know who to talk shit to. Yes, let us know and so we can make fun of you when we see that somebody scored 30 points because they started uh, (laughs) probably Russell Wilson at quarterback. So Yeah, but we want this to be fun. Like, we want to be able to interact with everybody and we want it to be a good time. So let us know who you are so we can have fun with it, you know? Yes, absolutely. And coming up, we might be throwing out a live show. So stay tuned. Check this it out true. on Twitter, Instagram. We'll make sure that we put it out when we decide to do it. But this is, this is true. Keep we your eyes peeled. At, we Stay are looking alert. at possibly Thursdays before Thursday Night Football, but we will keep you posted on the mm-hmm. exact specifics. For now, that'll do it for this episode. We are going back on the bench for the next six days, but we will be back off the bench next week. Hope you guys enjoyed, and we'll see you soon. Bye.